Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Hall. I'm with Alliance Solutions Group. I'm a territory manager in Southern California and today we're going to look at Sage 100 Contractors a Document Control Module. Before we begin, we'd like to introduce you to who Alliance Solutions Group and what we do. Uh, first off, our vision is to be the premier provider of technology solutions for the construction industry and really we just want to be your partner for life. We have proven solutions for the construction industry, obviously uh, Sage uh, 100 contractor that we're going to look at today, uh, but we also uh, represent Sage 300, formerly known as Timberline, and then the, the estimating products. And on the left-hand side here are all the web-based solutions that we represent, like Sage Intact Construction, Acumatica, ProEst, and Red Team. And now on to the demo. So I've already logged in to Sage 100 contractor. Just know that we can uh, keep people in and out of any module that you want. There's full security. Uh, I have full access. Um, and on the left-hand side here is what we call the tree control. And we're going to draw in directly into the project management module. And then within the project management module, there is the document control. So it's 6, 11, and then here's all the sub-modules within document control. There's two other ways to access information. Uh, the first way is if uh, I only used project management document control module, I can actually come into my menu and set it up where I only see the things that I care about. Uh, I have also come into the projects tab and added all the line items or all the, the modules that you can uh, access from the document control. So if you have someone that prefers the tile view and workflow, they can do that or um, over here on the tree control, it's up to you. Let's go ahead and start with the top and go and look at an RFP. An RFP is a document that you send to vendors or subcontractors containing a list of all parts needed or work to be performed. The vendor or subcontractor uses the RFP to create a proposal for you. Uh, you then can set up the RFP to be numbered sequentially with an association to a job and a phase. So this is for the job, no phase on it. The description is request for proposal, of course. We've selected the vendor that we're asking the information to. Uh, the statuses are defined and set by SAGE, but uh, the type typically inside a SAGE 100 contractor is definable and unlimited by you. Uh, send this information out, get the pricing. Um, we can print a, I'm just going to show you what it looks like, print a professional looking RFP. Here it is. And uh, you can email that out directly from here. You can email it out of Outlook or you can print it to PDF, save it, and do your normal email however you'd like. But once you get the prices back, we then can create the purchase order directly from here, which is very nice. RFIs, again, very important. Um, <clears throat> let me go and find one here. So this is for the job, the 14th First Street. It is the third RFI number. It looks like we've got a change and we both have uh, a, the information that we requested and then the information that was supplied from the architect. Again, we have statuses, we have types that are unlimited and definable by you. Um, we can then can track things like you know, the plan change, was this a change order, was this a schedule change? We also have pretty nice things like seeing things like open RFIs, seeing all the RFIs that are out there, uh, and I can just uh, run this query or I can if there's some kind of other RFI information that you're looking for, you could build your own query as well. Transmittals, so I don't really run into transmittals all that much. If you don't know, a transmittal is a cover sheet that lists all the documents that you're sending. The, inv the individual that you sent this document to signs the transmittal as proof that they received all these items. So this is for the job Rikers Residential and it's a updated schedule and included in this is obviously the updated schedule and a uh, progress bill as well. Uh, we have types, um, again, definable and unlimited by you. Um, we also can come in here and see things like who it was routed to. So it looks like Jessica Beta, it was routed to Jessica Baker, the owner of Rikers Residential, and um, the description is update and billings and when it was sent, when we needed by and was it returned. Submittals, very important as well. 
uh, in submittals, uh, it's a document with all the material samples provided to the general contractor or client, vendor, architect, etc. The submittal list each sample that you're providing for review. So here's the submittal number one, um, job division that it goes to, the description is the plumbing, who it's to, the vendor that we've selected uh, for the, the prices, and then, uh, I'm sorry, the information, and then the type, again, this is definable and limited by you under the submittal type, and uh, again, we can run a, a submittal log query if you'd like. We'll just run it for one job, but you can run it wide open if you like. So here's our one submittal that we've been looking at for this job. If you run it wide open, no jobs, we'd get a list of all of them. I only have one out there, though. Plan records. It's a nice place you can enter and track um, <clears throat> revisions made to the plans. In addition, you can track who has received these plans. So we have got the plan, the number, the job that it goes to, the descriptions, the full set, we can also see things like plan distribution of who the subcontractor is, the contact on that subcontractor and when it was sent and um, you know, date return, things like that. Do we want to deposit for our plans to get them back? Daily field reports is very strong inside a Sage 100 contractor. Um, <clears throat> this can be filled out from a phone. There's an add-on called Sage Field Operations that you can take a look at and uh, you can fill out that this daily field report directly from your phone or from a computer or laptop, whatever you have. Um, <clears throat> but it's going to capture the date, it's going to capture the information and the weather and obviously the job that we're working and if there are phase that we are working on in the description and then the project manager that who, who filled this out. Uh, some other nice things are the employees that we work so we can capture all the employees that worked on the job what they did, was it regular, overtime, double time, uh, the pay group, if they are union, and then the hours that they worked. Um, this would then flow into payroll um, where you can process it and cut checks directly from here. We al also can capture things like the subcontractors that were on the job, when they arrived, when they left, how many people were there, what did they do. Uh, we can do things like capture pieces of equipment as well, the description of what they did cost code that we're going to cost uh, the equipment to, and then the hours that it was operated and, and idled by. Also can track units completed as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, we can track incidences. Incidences are definable by you. Uh, there's just one accident here. It looks like uh, Carlos ripped off his finger, and you can um, select uh, time and then uh, any kind of notes. You also can attach things from here too, so you could take pictures of that injury and attach it directly to this um, <clears throat> daily field report. Also have meetings, so if we have a, a COVID me meeting and making sure everyone has their masks and who was present and uh, any notes, like everyone was given masks for the day and told to keep them on at all times, great. And any kind of orders that, uh, that were out there, order number, type, description, things like that. Punch list. I'm I'm sure you've got punch lists and all kinds of forms on you know sheets of paper or sticky notes or on your phone or in text messages. But it's a nice place to be able to capture <clears throat> the item numbers, what needs to be done, the location of those, the division if we're doing that, uh, the vendor who's responsible for it, and who we might need to contact over there, and when it was discovered, notified, scheduled, and completed. All really important things. Um, correspondence. This is just a nice way to track, you know, I sent an email or I sent a letter to this person and it was for this job and this was the description for it and it was about this vendor and it was attention to Vince and uh, the statuses are, def are set in stone by the database but the types again are definable and, and unlimited by you. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people are just using email for this and dragging and dropping uh, the emails that you would get directly from here. Nice part is, is you don't have to go and search your emails. It's always right here. 
uh, and then you know obviously this becomes a, a legal document because it's inside of Sage. Last but not least is the project hot list, one of my favorite features. I'm just going to hit display all, so I have access to all jobs uh, and all modules. But if I didn't ac have access to payables, I wouldn't see it. If I was a project manager and I had job level security, um, I would only uh, be able to see my jobs. So if I if I want to come in and just select a specific job to see all the um, project hot list, I can. I can also do things like drill into it. So if I want to come in here, drill into it, and here's an RFP um, for a purchase order. Looks like they got routed, and here's all the materials and information um, that we just looked at. And we can go in and you know print these or go along the process and and go and pay this invoice. A lot of people use the project hot list um, as an accounts payable routing and approving system as well. Um, a lot of the times I like to do things like on change orders. Anytime I set a change order up or a new change order, it's going to put it on my project hot list. That way it's always in front of me and I can manage it and track it along the process. You can also just uh, sort it by project manager too. So if I can see you know, what Carlos has got going on and looks like he, he's doing all right. He doesn't have too many things, but looks like um, he's about 18 years too late. So we might want to get on him and see if these are actually uh, that long. <clears throat> uh, so that was the project management module slash document control sub-module inside of Sage 100 Contractor. Again, this is Nick with Alliance Solutions Group, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.